Dear brothers and sisters, this is a homily for 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year B. The message for this Sunday is, Why husband and wife form one body? Jesus, in the Gospel passage of today, explains why it's so important for a husband and a wife to form one body as per the Creator's intention. In a nutshell, according to this Sunday's readings, there are two reasons why a husband and a wife form one body. In addition to that, these very reasons are discussed and elaborated later on in this homily. Given the fragility and weakness of man and woman, are they able to form one body really? And if their marriage does not work, should they resolve to divorce as the Pharisees show us in this gospel passage? In a little while, we shall respond to these pertinent questions in the light of today's readings. To begin with, let us see the context in which Jesus, his disciples, and the Pharisees find themselves in this passage of the Gospel. First, Mark chapter 10, verse 1, there we see Jesus and his disciples who arrive in Judea, the region that was under Herod. Let us also remember that Herod had made John the Baptist to be thrown into prison and even beheaded. Why? Because John the Baptist reproached Herod for divorcing his wife and then taking Philip's wife. Therefore, for the Pharisees to ask Jesus about divorce in this region, it was a trap in the sense that if he said divorce is allowed, then he would be accused of supporting Herod. On the other hand, if he said it is unlawful, then he would be accused of supporting John the Baptist. Anyhow, in order to answer their question about divorce, Jesus explains to them first and foremost the intention of the Creator or rather God's will for man and woman right from their creation in the book of Genesis. What is happening here is that the Pharisees see Moses as the one who authorized them to write a divorce document, whereas Jesus sees beyond that in such a way that it is God who created man and woman with the intention to form one body. For example, with my little experience, I have observed that couples who have spent many years together, actually, when you look at them keenly, their faces resemble one another a little bit, even though there is more resemblance at the spiritual level. Indeed, forming one body makes the will or the objective for creating man and woman according to the second creation account in Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, realized. As a matter of fact, the question of divorce preoccupied the minds of the Pharisees as well as the ones for the disciples and even to us today. Now straight to the point, why is divorce impossible according to Christ's explanation in this passage? Here are two reasons. One, God's intention for man and woman. God created man and woman with one flesh in order to live together as husband and wife, hence forming one body. Why form one body? To realize the unity that existed Originally, that is according to God's original plan, to help one another, to show the love that exists between us and God, and above all else, to show the indissoluble character of marriage. In other words, divorce shifts from the plan of God who created man and woman. Therefore, 
no man or woman on earth can change or separate what God has united. Second, pastoral reason. Search for solutions. In the First Testament, divorce was allowed whenever a husband is no longer interested in his wife. Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 1. However, Christ's response today cancels this way of divorce simply because it is not the way to resolve marriage problems. Because there are other avenues like reconciliation, forgiveness, and counseling to be sought first. In fact, in some parishes exist some specialized marriage counselors who help the couples in their marriage life. For example, it can be realized by organizing seminars and workshops about how to live a healthy marriage life. On the other hand, the Mother Church has given us a code of canon law that has in place institutional, personal, and laws that govern marriage issues. Are you aware that in each diocese there should be a tribunal for handling marriage issues? With all these avenues exploited to the maximum, it can do good to marriage institutions. The other important message that this passage teaches us is to be welcoming, more especially to accept children who represent the excluded in the society. By saying that we welcome children, Jesus does not say it accidentally because whenever divorce occurs, it is the children who suffers. Hence, we are encouraged to welcome accept, and even more so, help them by leading them to Christ. Let us not be a stumbling block like what the disciples were doing, as in they were preventing children from accessing salvation through Christ. To conclude, monogamy is the way to go in marriage. One man and one woman who derives their origin from one single flesh. Hence, impelled by their nature to recover their original unity, communion. To break up this order will bring about conflict and unhealthy competition for supremacy. Amen. Have a blessed Sunday.